come up at eight. Come back to two, 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 three. It was definitely a challenge. I'll be honest, we had been running hard leading up to this. It had just been an insane set of circumstances. We are in St. Louis. St. Louis. Yep, we're doing good. Bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. We were performing in a uh, sleep-deprived mode for sure. You know, we had fun, worked it out where we rotated driving and got to nap a little bit along the way. But it, it was really, it was fun because, it, you know, it was a new experience, new trip, new place. The excitement going out for sure was was a, a plus that helped push us along. You're realizing you're going into an, a, an unknown situation. So if, if you're not a little nervous, in fact, we were, you know, a lot nervous. You know, in the Marine Corps, oh yeah, we're so we're we checking our zero papers. distance. Do, you want to make sure it's exact. So we, we just found out that this post was 99. Running. So everything's well, zeroed at 99 yards. So we wanted to we confirm that, that because when yeah. you get way yeah. out there, a little yeah. shift in zero yeah. calculation makes a big difference. I mean, you have butterflies, you know, you're, you're, you're going up against some great competitors. So we're coming in with some unknowns. And so as we're talking through the match, we really simplified our, our process. Good communications, studying the, the terrain, understanding what the wind was gonna do over the terrain. A lot of it was just not getting psyched out with the competition that we knew we could shoot against. Send. Mike, come in, come in at one and a half. Send. There you go, send same. One and three quarter. Just over. Bring it down uh, just a favor, a tad bit low. Send one and three quarter again. There you go. Send one and three quarter again. Same. There you go. Send same. There you go, way to make up time. Tyson and the guys at Ringneck Ranch did a phenomenal job, you know, and Steve did a great job running the match. We have a lot of respect for those guys and really appreciate all the hard work that went into it. Honestly, in ELR, it's a team sport, whether you're on the same team or not. ELR is evolving very quickly and it's a team sport for all these guys who are out there are trying to figure out how to get more consistent hits further out. So we're all working together, whether you're on the same team or not. Don't get me wrong, we all want to win. And light class first place, Mike Acreage. Mike! You killed it, really. We want to be the top person, but ultimately, we're all just trying to figure out how to get more consistent hits further out. The first day on both guns, you start to get a sense of, of where you are. We shot early enough in the day that, you know, we felt like we had had good runs. Crushed it. We, uh, we got all but one of them. Cold bores came out clean. Wind calls were straight on. And so Mike, shot, Mike actually shot some really good groups out there. So it was kind of effortless. So that being said, it's a good start of the morning. It wasn't until the scores came in from the first day that we realized we were doing all right. You know, Mike was in second place, so that was a pretty big deal and was pretty exciting. Our team was in second place against some of the best shooters in the world, best spotters in the world. What was neat about the, the last day on light gun, we only had the one stage to shoot, and that's honestly where Mike won it. We pulled ahead on the last target. We had really good wind calls on the number nine target. And when we shifted over, because we had close calls, even though we didn't get a hit on nine, when we shifted over to 10, again, because of the system that we've developed and have practiced, we had a very specific angular shift. We knew what the wind was doing as a read off of nine. And so Pete was able to make some incredible wind calls. The wind call that he made, we dropped the second, third, and fourth rounds on the target and missed the fifth 
just off the right edge because the wind had just let up. So it was a mile and a half target, was the furthest we'd ever shot the 338. The next match we're gonna shoot, I think we're headed out to Blakely in October. The next biggest challenge for us is we have to get our ammo refined. If we can get the extreme spreads tightened up on the 416s, that's gonna be a pretty big deal. That should get us about 20 to 30% more hits. If we can get 20 to 30 more hits, we're, we have a, a realistic expectation to be consistently in the top 10, top five.